All right, people, as I told you, today will be MMA Monday and wrapped up the show earlier today, but knew that I'd be back on at a later point, and I told everybody that on the uh, Thomas Take Sports podcast earlier today uh, that I would return today to conclude the MMA Monday. We'll be talking about two separate topics. This particular part of the first 15 minutes of today's show um, I want to dedicate to Bellator MMA. Bellator MMA is obviously well known as the second best MMA organization. That's always the tag that Bellator MMA uh, seems to receive over the course of its uh, seven year, um, or actually almost nine year history, I should say. Um, starting in 2008 with Bjorn Rebney, now Scott Coker since 2015 has taken over and he's in his third year as the president of Bellator MMA and he has done a fantastic job. I have talked about this on several occasions, but it's not beating a dead horse. It's really not because of the fact that Scott Coker continues to find ways to create attention, bring eyes to his brand, bring eyes to, quote-unquote, the second leading organization in mixed martial arts. I, in mixed martial arts, I am a huge uh, mixed martial arts fan. I love the UFC. I love, uh, I loved Pride back in the day. I love Bellator. I love Strike Force. I love the WEC. All organizations of MMA, I tune into, I enjoy it, whether it's King of the Cage or anything on the flow grappling circuit, I enjoy mixed martial arts. So for me as a fan, I'm not pro UFC, I'm pro MMA. And Bellator has really struck a chord with me as a fan, being that I've been a fan for for a long time. They have signed uh, former UFC greats. They have signed former, you know, UFC big names, guys that might be out of their prime or close to it, or in some cases, guys that are currently in their prime. In the case of Rory McDonald, Ryan Bader, and Gegard Mousasi, just to name a few, and and Phil Davis, just to name just to name four fighters right there that defected from the UFC over to Bellator. They've really been able to bring in some big names bring in some big business, and they made an announcement a few weeks ago, maybe about a week ago, that in January, they are starting a eight-man heavyweight Grand Prix for the vacant Bellator heavyweight title, which was held at one point in 2014 by a Russian MMA mixed martial artist. I will not even try to pronounce his name, but he has not defended the belt in three years. He's had uh, fight opportunities in other organizations, and Bellator kind of just let it go by the wayside. But Bellator, under Scott Coker, wants to be taken more seriously, wants to have real champions at each weight class, guys that are, that are notable fighters. And when they announced this tournament, the idea for this tournament, I thought that this was brilliant. I thought it was bold and beautiful. And there's a pun there on the soap opera, but Bellator is bold and beautiful. The way they've made the decisions to draw the hardcore MMA fans in, they're a TV ratings business. They've dipped their toes into the proverbial pay-per-view waters, and they've done pretty well. You know, in the in the Rebney era, not, not so much, but in the Scott Coker era, Bellator NYC was largely successful for Bellator's, realistically, first foray into pay-per-view with a solid uh, card and a solid night of fights, a very entertaining night of fights in Madison Square Garden Arena in New York City. That was a big deal for Bellator and for the MMA scene. So Bellator announces that Chael Sonnen, Quentin Rampage Jackson, King Mo Lawal, Ryan Bader, Frank Mir, Fedor Milianenko, Matt Mitrione, and Roy Nelson would compete in the eight-man heavyweight tournament. The logistics, when, when this is released, okay, we got all these names, but obviously the question is, when will they fight? There's so many intriguing angles to this. We're going to be able to see interesting matchups that we never thought we would see. The word on the street for Chael Sonnen is that he will take on Rampage. The word on the street is that Ryan Bader will take on King Mo Lawal, and they were scheduled to fight for the Bellator light heavyweight title, but 
Mo had to pull out due to an injury. Ryan Bader has the chance to be a two-weight champion in Bellator, something nobody has ever done in Bellator MMA. And King Mo has a chance to beat Ryan Bader at heavyweight, something that, you know, would definitely add to the storyline if they were to fight again, uh, you know, at, at light heavyweight. Could that happen later on? Could King Mo own a win over Bader at heavyweight? That would be pretty, pretty intriguing. And then you have... Matt Matrione versus Roy Nelson, two guys that competed against each other in the Ultimate Fighter uh, Season 10, which was one of the biggest UFC Ultimate Fighter seasons of all time, obviously head by, headlined by Kimbo Slice, and Roy Nelson won that season. Matt Matrione was definitely a fan favorite on that season um, as well, so those are two names that the MMA fans should know. Uh, but above all the rest, Frank Mir coming back, First fight in the Bellator banner inside the Bellator cage will be against Fedor Emelianenko. Frank Mir, one of the greatest UFC heavyweights ever. Fedor Emelianenko, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Two of the greatest heavyweights of all time going toe-to-toe. Um, that is a fight that has to really pump up Frank Mir. What an opportunity to take on a guy like the last emperor, Fedor Emelianenko. Finally, you know, even though it's towards the end of his, uh, towards the end of his career, that's a, a definite big move. So the word on the street is is that Rampage will fight Chael sometime, actually not sometime, January 20th on that big January 20th card for Bellator. Uh, Douglas Lima will take on uh, Rory McDonald for the Bellator welterweight title. And then uh, the co-main would be Michael Chandler uh, and his return versus uh, one of the most game submission artists in MMA, and I'm not going to try to botch his name either, um, but look him up. He, he, is 18, he owns 18 wins uh, via submission out of his 22 victories inside an MMA cage as a professional. He's the real deal, and realistically, he's one of the tougher fights in the Bellator lightweight division. A, a guy in Michael Chandler that many people consider to be the Bellator lightweight champ. He had that injury versus Brent Primus. Brent Primus will not give him the rematch, and that is why Michael Chandler is where he is at currently. Um, and then, obviously, Chael Sonnen versus Quentin Rampage Jackson. Two of the best trash talkers in their own way. Chael Sonnen comes at you with some knowledge, some some kind of wrestling shtick, and Quentin Rampage Jackson just likes to make somebody feel as if they're, they're a fool, really. I have always, always wanted to see that fight dating back to, you know, Chael Sonnen's foray into the light heavyweight division. Uh, post his loss to Anderson Silva, he really started calling out a lot of the light heavyweights, Quentin Rampage Jackson included. Um, I'd really love to see the promotion for that. That would be very fun. Quentin Rampage Jackson is one of the best trash talkers. Chael is one of the best trash talkers. That 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 would be fun. But Rampage is stating that he doesn't want to go up against a wrestler. Hate to break it to you, Rampage, but you are a mixed martial artist. You're not a boxer. And Bader is a wrestler. And um, Mo is a wrestler, as he knows. So Chael's a wrestler, too. So... You know, it it is what it is. Would it have been cool to see Rampage go up against somebody like Frank Mir? Um, yeah, but I think the promotion side of things, uh, Quentin versus Chael would be very entertaining. Um, that is the rumor right now. Quentin versus Chael in January. Uh, in February, it would be Roy Nelson versus Matt Mitrione in March. It would be uh, Ryan Bader fighting King Mo Lawal. And then in April... The most obvious would be Fedor fighting Frank Mir. And the reason why I say it's the most obvious, Frank Mir is due to come back from his suspension in April. So he's going to want to get in there you know, as soon as possible. Just because he's suspended doesn't mean he can't train. So really, uh, it, it works out for the better, to be honest, that he's in Bellator, that he is coming off a of suspension. But when he returns, he'll be taking on the biggest heavyweight name uh, that the sport has has ever seen. Um, so what a great move by Bellator. What an innovative way for Bellator to bring attention to their brand and just another way for Bellator to uh, m make more history inside mixed martial arts. Scott Coker has ran this product for three years and they've done 
They've done quite a lot in three years. They're definitely a force to be reckoned with. They've definitely poached talent from the UFC onto their roster. Will they ever be as big as the UFC? Probably not, but they're definitely an organization that is worth uh, tuning in for. They're definitely an organization that's worth turning your TV on and seeing who's fighting on national TV. I like the national TV feel. I like that they're opening up with the Paramount Network which is what Spike is switching to. They're, they're opening up to that in January, on January 20th, on this large, massive mega card. Uh, big ups to Scott Coker for putting this together. I'm very excited for it. I want to watch every fight that takes place in this tournament because the eight guys that are fighting in this tournament I've been fans of for quite some time uh, in my own way for, for all of these guys and for certain fights that they've experienced and accrued throughout their careers. Um, Bellator, bold and beautiful. Keep doing what you're doing, Bellator. Don't deviate from your base. Your base is hardcore MMA fans on Spike TV, switching over to Paramount in January. We all know that Spike was a huge driving force as to why the UFC is as big as it is today, and they are trying to repeat history, becoming a big driving force for Bellator. So I'm Ryan Thomas. That was the Thomas Take. Take care.